money nerds, what's up? Today I want to talk about book endorsements, or those little blurbs from famous authors on the cover of books. Things like, Joe Abercrombie is terrific, George R. R. Martin, or fantastic, defiant, utterly brilliant, Ken Liu. Now in fairness, I haven't let these blurbs sway me too much in my book buying, but occasionally I will be browsing a bookstore, this is actually the book I did this on, where I'll find a book that has a beautiful cover and I want to buy it on its cover alone, and I'll see an endorsement from an author I love, and it'll kind of push me over the edge to actually purchase it. Like it's not even on the top list of factors I'd buy a book, but it can push me there sometimes. The problem is that I found them to be extremely untrustworthy. I've been burned so many times of being pushed over the edge buying a book that authors I really love like, and then finding it very mediocre or even disliking it. Now in fairness, I haven't kept track of all the times that I loved a book with an endorsement on the cover, but I think what that means is that they're just really meaningless for me. Like you could love this book, you could hate it, but it doesn't really have an effect on how I view it based on an author endorsement. So today I wanna to talk about like not the necessarily bad reputation of book endorsements, but more the butt of the joke reputation they have, why we're still doing them, and who these book endorsements are really for. See you after the jump. By now it seems to be pretty well known that book endorsements on the cover generally come from friends or at least networked acquaintances of the author or just asked from the publisher themselves. In fact, I suspect, like many do, that publishers just require the authors in their house to give these reviews for other books of up and coming authors who aren't as well established. This is particularly because there are some fantasy authors that seem to give endorsements extremely freely. Now I would never make the claim that they are all done in bad faith or that they're all random and not really liking the book, but I do think it does happen. While researching for this video, I found an author who self-admits to having writing book blurbs down to a science. Now, while this isn't a fantasy author, I think he has some interesting things to say. I can figure things out pretty quickly, says Gary Scheitengart, a novelist and memoirist who has polished the practice into an art form. He's given so many blurbs, more than 150 by his counting, that there's even a Tumblr devoted to some of his more notable snippets. I'll look at the first sentence of a galley. I'll look at the cover and it just comes to me, he says. Reading randomly from a book is also very helpful. Sometimes I tried to read further, but you know, how far can you get? Does anyone even read these books anymore? That said, he doesn't hold back. I've compared people to Shakespeare, Tulsi, or whatever, he says. I'll do anything. This quote was wild to me and felt like a good justification for some of the bad rap that these promotional quotes have gotten over the years. Now, do I believe that every person who's quoted on the top of the book hasn't read the book? No, but do I believe that probably a lot of them haven't? Yes, and I think this quote's good proof of that. Now within the fantasy community, there are jokes about this as well, particularly with George R. R. Martin, where people will say that his quotes tend to always be something like, the way blank should be written, or even, the original Game of Thrones. He also tends to give them very frequently. If you pull out some books in your library, I bet you will find a George R.R. R. Martin endorsement. Now, if book endorsements are starting to become sort of a joke, I kind of wondered why are we even doing them? During my research, there were a ton of pages with how to's on getting book endorsements, where to place them, what makes good quotes. So clearly they are still considered a very desirable, typical, and almost expected thing as a part of your book cover design. Now I'm trying to figure out whether or not they're useful. The first question has to be, do they sell books? Now, publishers seem to think so, but honestly, this data just hasn't been collected. It hasn't really been searched after. And honestly, I understand why. It's a very difficult thing to pinpoint and measure. It's wrapped up in so many other factors that would be extremely hard to separate. Now, despite that, one group, Codex Group, has tried to quantify that data. They've used several thousand participants and shown them variation of book covers, some with the blurb on and some with the blurb off. They found that only 2.5 participants found books through their favorite authors author and only 1% were convinced to buy them because of that. Now I am unsure if whether this includes all recommendations of their favorite author or just specifically book blurbs themselves. I don't think that was very clear and additionally surveys are notoriously bad ways to collect data because of so many confounding factors that I'm not even even sure that this small percentage that they've given us is even reliable. So honestly it feels like we may be doing these for no reason. Although during my research I also uncovered another reason book blurbs are given 
and they're not always for the reader themselves. We now very often receive submissions from literary agents to consider a book, and the agent's letter will have endorsements already in place from authors you've heard of, says Michael Pitch, CEO of publisher Hatchet Book Group. And that's the way the agent is getting the publishing community to read this book ahead of all the other thousands of books on submission at that time. So perhaps endorsements at this point are really a way to catch the eye of publishers by agents from the thousands of books they get that they want to publish. Maybe it is a mark that this book could be good. So what would a no endorsement future look like? I thought it would be interesting to mention what the first endorsement ever is considered to be. It was given by Ralph Waldo Emerson for the book Leaves of Grass by Walt Whitman. On the spine, it says, I greet you at the beginning of a great career. Now I should mention that this was written in a letter to Walt Whitman, a private letter that was actually giving praise for the book that Emerson had read. So in that way, we know this one at least was heartfelt and legitimate. But this book was published in 1855, so 167 years ago. Do we still need these book endorsements today? Does a book look worse without an endorsement? Do we just expect to see them now and a book that doesn't have one makes us feel uneasy? I don't know, I think covers could look pretty good without some text on them. And I will say some books have been ruined, I think, by endorsements, like the Piranesi paperback, which I think looks really bad with all that text. And I'm allowed to say that because I think it deserves every endorsement it's ever gotten. So I think we could leave them off, but do I think we will? Probably not. It costs the publishers nothing to put these on there. And if there's even a small chance that it helps sell books, I can't see publishers getting rid of it since it takes so little effort. So I think we'll see book endorsements well into the future. It's just whether or not we're gonna be paying a lot of attention to them. Well, let me know how you feel about book endorsements. Have you ever given them thought or is this the first time you've thought about them at all? Have you ever bought a book based on it alone? Let me know in the comments. And as always, if you like this kind of content, please like and subscribe. And if you wanna see what I'm currently reading as well as other nerdy rants, you can check me out on Instagram. Instagram at bookborn.reviews. I'll see you next time. Bye.